literally just fits. I'd rather have one that's about twice as long that I could get both hands on. And if you do have one, the, they actually do recommend cutting it. Pop a hole, squeegee, and you should be able to get a good seal. Again, big enough for me to get both hands on. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Zach Does It. In today's episode, past Zach is going to be referencing the previous episode a few times. So to clear up any confusion, if this is the first time you're joining us or you're curious about what soundproofing is or what types of materials it's made out of, why it's important even, uh, you might wanna check out my previous episode, which I'll have linked below in the description uh, or in the cards above. So if you wanna check that out, go ahead and do that first. Uh, otherwise, if you're here to learn about some tools and techniques that Passac used to apply that soundproofing to his Miata, well, you've come to the right place. In today's episode, past Zach is going to cover some of his favorite tools and techniques that he used when he learned how to apply soundproofing for the first time. It was a pretty cool experience and ultimately the result was awesome. I can't wait to have an update episode and talk about how effective all of the soundproofing was. But that's it for me. I got to kick it back to past Zach and let's go learn about how to apply soundproofing the easy way. Well, we are about, well, maybe halfway, we'll see. Um, but we've got the big pieces out of the way for the main cabin area. So what's next is some of these small finicky pieces that we, again, wanna make sure that we cover so that just like the foam on the bottom, uh, when they're in contact with one another, if there are any vibrations, we're able to absorb them as much as possible. Uh, these pieces in particular, are very lightweight and are more likely to vibrate and cause road noise, excessive road noise, compared to some of the other parts. So we definitely wanna give these some of the same treatment. Oh, and they're also right behind the, both of the seats. So the chances of these causing road noise and us hearing it are significantly higher uh, than for some other parts of the car. So we are going to make sure it's dry. And we'll also talk about some of my favorite tools. The Dynamat kit, of course, recommends you get the Dynamat roller, which is really just a really hard, small roller. In fact, if you have normal size hands, you probably don't want this one because it literally just fits and you can't get a lot of leverage. I'd rather have one that's about twice as long that I could get both hands on because of the amount of force I have to put on the mat to get it into every nook and cranny, which is very important. One of the most important things when installing soundproofing is to make sure that there are no air bubbles. You might have caught on uh, on the back wall. I actually used a screwdriver a couple of times to punch a hole where there was an air bubble. Um, air by itself is not really good at dampening sound, hence why we're adding all this stuff to remove air and remove any opportunity for things to vibrate against each other. So while you're applying, if you can't get enough force with the roller, or maybe the roller is too big to get into some nooks and crannies, you can actually use something that's rounded, but something small like a screwdriver even. And the reason I like doing that is because you have this very smooth edge that's not going to damage the soundproofing, uh, or at least it won't damage it too much, but you can really get it into these small grooves to make sure that there's no air bubbles. Um, and again, if you do have one, the, they actually do recommend cutting it. So pop a hole in your soundproofing, squeegee all of the air out through that new hole, and you should be able to get a good seal. But we'll, uh, we'll take a look at that technique here where it's a little bit easier to tell what's going on, uh, and it obviously won't be sped up either. So let's grab, let's see, that's actually a pretty good piece. We can, we can soundproof a good portion of this with some leftovers. 
All right, and we already know that this is the bottom. We don't want or need to soundproof the bottom of it because uh, underneath is where the gas tank and a bunch of other stuff is. So we'll just keep it on the top for now. Uh, and we just want to figure out what the best coverage is going to be. I'm thinking something like that. And then we'll just cut a line right across here. And hopefully we'll find another piece. Uh, maybe this one. We'll find that and cover it up as well. Again, looking for a minimum of that 30% coverage, but obviously this is more than that already. So let's measure get a marker. And I'm just gonna cut along this ridge. So if I draw a line, a crooked line, I'll be able to see that while I cut. Looks like we're going to have an overhang, so I'm just going to trim that as well. Perfect. Okay, and another technique that you can use is applying it kind of in a line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on this side. I'm just going to slowly work my way down. I'll keep this folded up. And then this way, there's no opportunity for air bubbles to get created. We can just slowly work our way through while there's still an opening for the air to escape by. And in this case, I think my finger is actually doing a good enough job. Nope, definitely want the screwdriver. Or uh, you can actually use the back end of a marker. And we'll show that to you. We just want to kind of work it in there. And ideally, by the end of this, the Dynamat or whatever soundproofing you're using will have the same contours, the same look and feel and shape as the metal surface underneath. And that's really all we're looking for. Make sure we get a good seal around the edges. Don't be afraid to mix up the tooling. I really like the bottom of this, uh, or an even larger screwdriver for the flat surfaces, uh, because this I can, I can get a much better grip on. And if I did want to put two, it's again, big enough for me to get both hands on as I push into this. And after you run the screwdriver over it or whatever device you're using to, to squeegee the air out, you just want to use your fingers and again, just kind of push on little areas uh, where you would expect an air bubble to be. So I'm just going around the entire edge of this groove, making sure that it's stuck all the way around. And there we have it. And just to, just to test, we can even uh, gently hold it. And wow, that is, that is a very big difference. Uh, obviously these are different shaped pieces, but um, actually we can even maybe use a screwdriver to, to simulate something that might make it rattle. Let's, let's listen. That is wild. That is so cool. So even when I hit the metal outside of the soundproofing, it's significantly quieter and more muted than this piece is. Oh, I'm so excited. I cannot wait to get on the road and see how effective this soundproofing is now that it's applied to almost the entire car. All right, well that is one piece down. We've got at least three more to go right now. Uh, then we can get these installed. And I think after that, we'll put the Dynapad in, we'll get that extra layer of insulation ready to go. And I think we'll be just about finished. 
I think my favorite part about this stuff is that you don't have to be super accurate. You just need to make sure that again, it covers 30% of the surface for it to be worth the time and effort and money. Now this one actually has a much bigger groove that we want to be aware of. So we're going to use that technique I used before where we just slowly work our way down as we apply pressure. And then that way the air will continue to escape out of this open end. And what's cool is this screwdriver is actually just about the perfect width for this groove too. So this one is actually a little too big, but up here I can use it. Down here, I won't be able to get in as well. So picking the right size tool for the job is almost as important um, as using the right technique or uh, any number of other things that you could do. You know, there's just something therapeutic about doing this as well. It's, it's one of those things that you can't rush uh, in fact, the, the harder you rush, the more you try to do this quickly, uh, the harder it becomes actually. Um, it, because next thing you know, it's sticking to everything you don't want it to stick to. It's bending in ways you don't want it to bend. It really is one of those things where uh, going slower and taking your time and being very deliberate with your actions are going to result in a significantly better outcome. Uh, and you're gonna, you're gonna hate your life a lot less. And on big flat surfaces, this roller actually does a really good job. So if you do have a hard rubber roller, um, actually even things like a, a rubber mallet, where you can just kind of pound a little bit, you'll be able to get a really good, good seal. All right. That is so quiet. That is so quiet. That is, wow. Oh, that, I am so excited. I am so excited. All right, and now for the big one. What's the best way to do this? Could have sworn I had. Oh, there it is. All right, don't lose track of your stuff. Line this up here. The top edge. And this aluminum backing makes it really, really nice for holding shape as you're trying to measure stuff out. up so we can see how far down we need to go. <gasps> Ooh, slight, slight damage. That's okay, we'll, we'll fix that when we apply it. All right, and time to measure the second time. That is also satisfying, just unsticking this material. And with this, I'm actually, there's a benefit. There's a bunch of holes in this piece that will allow the air to escape from the back. So I don't have to be as careful. See like these? Uh, I don't have to be as careful when I apply this.
All right. Well, we have finished installing the Dyna mat. It is now time to get the Dyna pad in place. Uh, this is more or less the same type of uh, process. We want to make sure that we put this in the places that we want to keep uh, temperature and noise and any other kind of unwanted things uh, to a minimum and we can cut this to size. So we'll put this in the front wheel well uh, for the driver's side and the passenger side. We'll measure it, we'll cut it, and they do say you can use a spray adhesive on the back, um, but this is gonna sit under the carpet and it's not really going to slide around that much, especially if we get the size just right. So we'll go ahead and do without the adhesive. Uh, and then that way in the future, if I ever get another Miata or if I ever sell this car and feel like tearing this back out, uh, I can do that. Um, realistically though, that's probably not gonna happen. If you wanna use spray adhesive, you can go right on ahead. But this is pretty cool material. It's pretty heavy. I can already tell that it is going to do a lot in terms of insulating for both temperature and sound. It's got uh, some soft foam, some open cell foam on the tops and bottom. Uh, so I don't believe that there's a right way up, or at least there's no instructions to tell me that there is. And then in the middle is a really thick rubber sheet. So I'm hoping that this is also a little bit more water resistant as well. So water may get onto one side, but that barrier is gonna make sure that it doesn't go any deeper. So let's go ahead and get this installed. And that is a wrap. Over the past two episodes, we learned why soundproofing exists and how it works, what makes it so awesome. We also learned some tools and techniques that help make the process of applying it easier so you don't end up fighting yourself to get a good result. If you've reached this point and you still have questions about soundproofing or anything we've done so far in the process, be sure to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. With each new episode, we get one step closer to putting Mama Miata back on the road where she belongs. And speaking of roads and journeys, I am on the road to 100 subscribers, so if you've been joining us this far and you've been thinking about subscribing, I encourage you to go ahead and follow. Doing so will keep you posted and up to date with each new episode that releases, and I have so much planned, not just for Mama Miata, but for other projects as well. But that's it for this episode. I can't wait to see you on the next one.